We've had some difficulties. Apparently, marriage has challenges. There was some bloodshed. Yeah, she tried to kill me. I did. Well, that shakes a man. How can we trust each other? Faith. Annoying answer. Agreed. And something I really love about The Great is how, you know, it's rooted in history, but it still takes a life of its own and goes in these wild directions. And I'd love to know, did you guys both familiarize yourselves with the historical events at all, like while shooting? Or did you kind of just try to keep it within the script? I think before we started filming the first season, I felt like, oh, maybe I should do some research, but I kind of quickly realized that the research wasn't going to help with a show like this. Like our, our scripts and Tony's writing is really our Bible when it comes to the story. And so, of course, Tony he knows a lot about Catherine the Great, and then he chooses what he wants to pick out of that. But bringing, you know, female education and science and all of those things to, to Russia, those were all true things, so I think we wanted to create a version of her, but still, she's very much just a version. I may have some nice anger at times. Understood. Since you're playing versions, was there anything important for you to include or pull from what we know of the real characters, or was it mostly just focused in on the scripts? No, like, it, it became apparent very early on that Elle did more research in terms of, like, finding out true historic facts about Catherine brought those to the story, but for Peter and, and what I was doing, it was very much just about what was in the scripts. And actually the freedom that, that creates was more important for me than trying to like aim, aim for a bullseye and kind of paint myself into a corner somewhat of trying to be authentic to who this person might have been and trying to play a ghost of them. It was more freeing and better for our story and, and this style of show to not fill my brain with all of that and just go, all right, I can do anything and go anywhere. And that's what gave me the freedom. The memorization is very extensive and like hardcore for us because we do have to be kind of period or punctuation has to be perfect and each word, you know, we don't stray from the dialogue in that sense. But emotionally and how we want to perform it and block the scenes, we have complete freedom. We can really do whatever we want. So for me, I have an English accent, so there's that changes the rhythm altogether. I think Tony writes really well for an English accent, especially for this this tone, it works. But I think normally if a scene's not working, it normally needs to go faster. Or at least, you know, you have the first couple takes to really figure out what the scene is. And we're like, okay, we know the emotional beats of the scene. And now let's take out all the beats and like, cause we already know it. So let's just bring it up to speed. And really, it's kind of like a His Girl Friday, like, you know, when we can get into it. When we can do it fast like that, we know it normally does work. Yeah, we did, we did lots of, like, theater and rhythm games, I guess, to get on during the rehearsal period for that, where we had kind of repetition of lines and just knowing the script really well, and then kind of adding, adding the rhythm of the dialogue to physical actions. So there was kind of a pattern that came with that. The thing that I find really fun is then trying to keep that pace and rhythm, but with how sharply it can turn, or how quickly a character can have an aside within... You can have a speech where you're, you're talking about something, but then there could be a very quick aside about something else before continuing on the original thought, thought stream. And, and things like that are really fun as an actor. 